Hi, my name is Emily Kuang, and I am a PhD student at Rochester Institute of Technology. On behalf of my co-authors, I would like to present our paper called Enhancing Older Adults' Gesture Typing Experience Using the T9 Keyboard on Small Touchscreen Devices. The world is currently experiencing rapid growth in both the adoption of technology and the aging population. And in recent years, older adults have increasingly adopted small touchscreen devices like smartwatches. However, due to the small screen size and age-related declines in motor dexterity, it can be hard for them to type accurately and effectively. The T9 is a predictive text technology that allocates three to four letters on each key, which results in a bigger space for each key and, al and alleviates inaccurate input. The T9 keyboard was also adopted by feature phones in the early 2000s, and many older adults are familiar with this layout. Thus, we were motivated to investigate ways that would improve text entry on the T9 keyboard for older adults. And as touchscreen keyboards have gradually replaced physical keyboards, many users adopted gesture typing, which would allow them to input a word through one continuous movement. And recent research has shown that gesture typing is particularly promising for older adults. In an experiment comparing gesture typing and tap typing on a smartphone QWERTY keyboard, Older adults were 15% faster and had a 27% lower error rate when using gesture typing than tap typing. So we were inspired by this work and sought to investigate how gesture typing on the T9 keyboard can be improved for older adults. So there are some advantages. However, gesture typing directly on the T9 still faces important challenges, such as the gesture being interrupted due to two consecutive letters sharing the same key and that leads to typing inefficiencies and poor user experience. So for example, if we take the word Apple, it requires the user to lift their finger or pause without visual or tactile feedback to re-enter the second P. And to address this need, we propose a novel keyboard that enhances gesture typing while maintaining the conventional layout. So we found that you know, key one is currently not occupied by any letters. So we wanted to leverage this place to duplicate the letters of the previously entered key. So this would allow users to swipe from key nine, I'm sorry, key one, from any of the eight other keys to repeat the same letter without the need to pause or lift the finger up. So for again, using the word Apple, the swipe gesture would start from key two to key seven. And then instead of pausing or lifting, it was, they would swipe directly to key one and finally key to key five and key three and the letters corresponding to key one change with the movement of their finger. Another example is the word moon, where all the letters are actually on key six. So when using T9 with enhanced key one, the swipe gesture will start from key six to key one, then to key six, and finally back to key one. So this can be completed with one continuous gesture. So we wanted to evaluate our novel keyboard with the conventional one, but for the user study, we also chose another keyboard that has been proposed by other researchers, which introduces the wiggle gesture. In this uh, interaction, users can make three direction changes within the same key to enter the consecutive letter. Again, this would reduce the need to pause or lift their finger. So for example, when typing the word apple, the gesture would start from key two to key seven, and then three, uh, three direction changes are drawn on key seven, to re-enter the letter P, and then they would go back to um, key five and key three. So we conducted a within subjects experiment to compare the performance and the behavior of older adults using these three different keyboards. We also conducted the same experiment with young adults, and this was mostly to see if the trends in a typing performance and preferences are consistent across age groups. On average, the older adults were very familiar with typing on the touchscreen, moderately familiar with the T9, but only slightly familiar with gesture typing. Young adults were extremely familiar with typing on touchscreen, but less familiar with gesture typing and the T9 keyboard. And this is our study procedure. And participants were first given a tutorial of each input method and had time to practice before the formal session. And the formal session consisted of four blocks with five phrases per block. And the order of the type of the T9 key keyboard was counterbalanced. And after completing the task on each keyboard, they completed the NASA TLX questionnaire. So next, I will describe the results of our study with the focus on the performance and preferences of older adults. 
So for the typing speed, the fastest speed for older adults occurred on the T9 with enhanced key one, and that was significantly faster than the T9 with wiggle gesture. And the trend remained the same for young adults. And learnability is an important metric for illustrating the learning curve, which is a typing speed separated into different blocks. So we see that the speed for the T9 with enhanced key one, which is the yellow line, gradually increased throughout each block. And this suggests that this could be a viable improvement over a period of time. For the T9 with wiggle gesture, which is the green line, there were significant differences between the first and fourth and the second and fourth block, which suggests that this um, keyboard led to the largest learning curve. KSPC is the average number of strokes necessary to generate each character, and this can represent the efficiency of a keyboard, whereas the lower the KSPC, the better. For older adults, the T9 with enhanced key one was significantly lower than the T9 with wiggle gesture. And there were, for the word error rate, um, the older adults made the most input errors on the conventional T9, followed by the T9 with wiggle, and the least error occurred on the T9 with enhanced key one. And this trend stayed consistent for young adults, but there were no significant differences between the keyboards. And there are also three common categories of typing errors. So insertion occurs when an additional key is pressed, an omission occurs when a key is missed, and a substitution occurs when an incorrect key is pressed instead of the target key. So we found that the older adults made significantly more insertion errors on the T9 with wiggle gesture than the T9 with enhanced key one. For the delete score word, we also calculated this to compare the performance in terms of corrected input errors. So we found that the T9 with enhanced key one resulted in a significant lower number of deletes than the T9 with wiggle gesture, and this remained the same for young adults. In terms of the subjective ratings, the T9 with enhanced key one was rated as incurring significantly lower physical demand, effort, and frustration level than the T9 with wiggle gesture. However, there were no significant differences between the conventional and the enhanced key one. For Likert responses, the older adults rated the T9 with enhanced key one as the most efficient and significantly more efficient than the T9 with wiggle gesture. And older adults gave the same median ratings of strongly agree to the conventional T9 and the T9 with enhanced key one. And lastly, older adults preferred the T9 with enhanced key one the most and significantly more than the T9 with wiggle gesture. So based on re uh, results, we also derived some design considerations. So we looked at the learnability curves and we found that the typing speed for both older adults and younger adults increased, increased throughout each block. However, the typing speeds observed in our study are still lower than those in recent work with other layouts. For example, the 26 key QWERTY keyboard or a T9 light keyboard with rearranged letters in each key. Thus, future designers need to balance the learning cost of new layouts with potentially slower speed of conventional layouts that maintain the same letters, um, which is better for learnability. And for another consideration, we also found that it was challenging for older adults to enter words that were long gestures or were unfamiliar. So we found that you know, older adults may benefit from more advanced techniques that can reduce the number of keystrokes, such as prediction algorithms that suggest words based on partial input or based on patterns of common words that follow a previous word. And the third consideration is that, you know, this study focused on improving the T9 keyboard, but the issue of having large fingers on small surfaces is generalizable to all text entry and target selection tasks. Thus, we can consider ways to extend the interaction interface beyond the touchscreen. For example, recent work proposed a taxonomy of gestures that would include above device air swipes, rim taps, and hovers. And other researchers have shown the um, other researchers have shown the viability of using a touch sensitive wristband since it has larger surface area. And as AR becomes more prevalent, virtual keyboards can also be used, which would no longer confine users to the small touchscreen areas. So in conclusion, our proposed design utilized key one to allow users to make continuous gestures leading to better typing experience and learnability. However, there were still some limitations to our study which includes the need to select candidate words, which gave rise to errors. And also there were only 12 adults, um, older adult participants. And also for future work, you know, some participants mentioned they usually use a stylus instead of their fingers. So we think that future work is warranted to explore other input strategies and to conduct a longitudinal study with more participants. So thanks so much for listening and please read our paper for more details about the statistical methods, qualitative findings and discussions.